computer. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our really special edition of um, our Learn with an Expert program for Indigenous Peoples Day. I am so excited to have a few or two different groups today, um, both performing and sharing a little bit more about what their performance is and a little bit more about their culture. Um, and so I would love to go ahead and just have us get started today. As a reminder, you are encouraged and welcome to ask questions in the um, in the Q and A section of Zoom if you are using Zoom, and if you are using YouTube, you can log in and ask questions in there. We'll be monitoring both, and we'll try and get to as many questions as we can. All right. So um, again, I'm really excited. I'm going to introduce our first group. This group is Little Priests. They are a native singing group. Um, they're gonna be sharing songs as dancers highlight the different dance categories seen at powwows. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn it on over to Kelly. He's gonna um, tell you a little bit more about what they're gonna be doing today. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Kelly Logan. As we say, that's our government, na government name. My uh, Ho-Chunk name is Nachkehu. And it means uh, chief of hearts. My family gave me another name called Hina, which means the second boy. If you're a first boy, they would call you Kunu. If you were the first girl, they would call you Hina. So inside my family, I got three names and my family calls me Hina in the house. So a little bit about uh, the Ho-Chunk culture. Uh, today, we're gonna be showing you some of the native culture here. I brought my singing group, Little Priest Singers, and we're in and around the Wisconsin area, perform, sing for uh, all types of gatherings. And we got a few different styles of dancers we're gonna show you. And uh, I think we're gonna start out with what we call a flag song. The Native Americans really hold their veterans up high and believe in everything. They protect us, they fight for us, they die for us. So we always start out our social events honoring them with a flag song. So we're gonna have little priests do a flag song. Thank you. And next, uh, we're going to be bringing out our uh, dancers one by one here. We're going to have our jingle dress dancer come out here. And uh, you see, you maybe I'm not sure if you can hear the dress, but uh, we got metal cones. And there's one for each day of the year. This is called a jingle dress or a medicine dress. And it got that name. It comes from the Ojibwe people way up north. And they uh, they had a sickness in their village. And uh, one of the uh, older ladies, elder ladies had a dream of this dress about it healing their village. And uh, she made this dress. She had a young lady wear it, dance around, and everybody enjoyed watching her dance. And uh, if you ever notice, start feeling good in your mind, your body fouls, and everybody got healed. So that's kind of how it became the healing dress, the medicine dress. 
And again, it is from the Ojibwe tribe up north. So we're going to have her demonstrate the women's jingle. traditional style of dance and do we have a younger dancer here and uh adult dancer we got two different styles of our traditional dance the oneida style and a northern style of dancer and uh this little guy's been learning the past few years and uh he's gonna be out here singing and this is kind of the original style of dance for uh, most of our tribes. And uh, got a lot of feathers on him. Up top, they got feathers. Those are all eagle feathers. And uh, carry a fan. And you can hear the bells, the shells. It's just to keep, keep the dancers in time. So we're going to have these guys demonstrate the, minced, the traditional style of dance. All right, that's our traditional style, our male traditional style. And uh, our last one, we have uh, a fancy shawl dancer. And this is not a very old dance. It's a new style of dance. You see all the bright colors. And she can do what we call a freestyle. She can do all her movements, uses her shawl, spins, does moves. And this only came about in the last 50 years. Um, the younger people wanted to do a little more than a traditional style dance. So they came up with the style of dance. And it's kind of right, it kind of uses a lot of the native uh, regalia, you see beadwork, hair ties, leggings, moccasins. So we're gonna have her demonstrate the women's fancy or freestyle dance.
freestyle fancy dance we got our last style here our men's grass dance you see he's got a lot of fringe a lot of yarn and uh this dance came from out west they had the long grass would blow in the wind they'd have these a village would move into the area and these young guys would go out and stomp the grass down later on they came out with a uh, song dances they used to tie the long grass to themselves. They kind of evolved into this dance. So we're going to have them demonstrate the men's grass dance. dance uh, I want to talk about our drum here what we call a big drum and uh, all tribes kind of have their own story but they all kind of mean the same thing and that uh, this drum you guys might say it was called mother nature um, other tribes kind of call uh gods or things like that but it was said this drum was given to us to bring us together because tribes were fighting with each other going to war with each other so that drum was given to us to bring us together and it has we are all different tribes here and we're here dancing performing for you but not only that not only the natives but we have some non-natives here participating. So it not only has it brought the native people together, but it's brought all the, all the people together. And we call this the heartbeat of our nation. Usually we have it in the middle and we go around it, but for the show purposes, we have it on the side. So it's a little bit about the drum. And uh, this is this is nothing spiritual. These are just social dances we're doing. And we come out on this beautiful indigenous day to show you this. Maybe you'll learn something and bring something home. At one time or another, everybody, everybody had their own culture. Then they came to America and now we kind of have a different culture. And the natives are the same way, except we're trying to keep our original culture alive. So in that fact, we kind of live in two worlds. We do this, 
But then later on, we're going to go go to the movies or go to McDonald's. So we're just like you are, but we have this culture that we're doing. So uh, I guess with that, we got a few questions that can come up. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Again, this is so wonderful. And we have so many questions in the chat. Um, and so one of the questions that I'm seeing is um, someone is wondering about um, maybe like older versus newer dances. Are there new dances that are being performed or are these kind of all traditional? There are dances that are thousands of years old. And these are just styles of dance. We have dances we do, a uh, fish dance, a swan dance, a snake dance. Other tribes have like a buffalo dance. So there's all types of dances we can do. And they're all hundreds and hundreds, or maybe thousands of years old. But like, if, which is a good question. Like we had Megan do the freestyle fancy. That's only 50, 60 years old. And there's a male version of that also. So it just, every tribe is a little bit different from one coast to the other. And some are really older dancers and some of them are new. So very good question. Awesome, thank you. We are getting a lot of questions about your regalia, um, kind of about everybody's regalia. And um, so one of the questions I'm getting is um, specifically about what you're wearing around your neck, if you'd like to explain a little bit about that, if that's okay. Um, with the native R, well, I should say Ho-Chunks, uh, uh, you get a clan in Ho-Chunk, we have 12 clans. And one of them is the Wolf Clan. And you go by whatever your dad is, that's what clan you're going to be. So my dad is Wolf Clan. So that's why I got a wolf on my necklace. And uh, sometimes people have bear claw necklaces. I can't wear that because I'm not Bear Clan. I do have a wolf necklace I have. I didn't wear it today, but I mean, made out of wolf claws. And but I didn't wear it today, but I do have my necklace. So then all, all the regalia will tell you a little bit about the person. Um, like our Oneida friend here, James, I can tell right away he's Oneida by his regalia, his designs, and maybe even that he's from the Wisconsin area. Some floral pictures are beaded on his outfit, so you can learn a lot about about. Like you know, and now you know something about my me and my necklace and the other regalia. Awesome, thank you. Um, so another question that we just got. So we saw that the dances were done um, mostly today, at least separated by gender. Is that typical, or are there other dances that are um, kind of all inclusive? Maybe that's a bad word to say, but with men and women. Yeah, there's usually just kind of men dances, styles, women dance, but they do cross over occasionally, even with the drum. Usually only men are supposed to be at the drum, but uh, this family uh, from Minnesota, this guy, he was an accomplished singer, but he had no male sons to pass this on to. So he had a daughter and she learned all his songs that they could pass him on. And so she sang at the drum and that was okay because he had no boys. Same thing with dancers. There's uh someone doesn't have a boy or a girl and they try, we have, we've had male style dances, but a woman would go into that area. So it's, uh, it's very rare, and we have like once one dance. Most tribes do a man and a woman dance together called a two-step. Some call it rabbit dance or a Kahoma dance. Every tribe kind of has their own name for it, but so it's perfect. Thank you. Um, and then this is actually a question for all dancers. So any dancer, if you'd like to answer, you're welcome to. Um, so one of the questions that we are getting is. 
um, you know, we see mostly we've seen one dancer do one type of dance. Um, and do you do multiple types of dances? Do you specialize in one type? And if you do multiple types of dances, um, do you have a favorite? I, uh, when I was younger and more in shape, no, I uh, liked to dance Fancy Shaw, uh, but as I got older, and uh, since the Jingle Dress's uh, purpose is to heal, I kind of went through a journey uh, to become a better person. So I, uh, I felt like the Jingle Dress connected to me on my uh, journey to wellness. Oh, and my name is Lana Shako. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, enrolled member of the Grand Travers Band. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can have our dancers come out and introduce themselves. Mr. Flores here. Siguli Swagwek, Oneyote Agani, Waganyota, Niwagi Deloda, Yoda Hala Kodaze, Niyu Gets. What I said was, you know, the Oneida language, greetings, everyone. Uh, I come from the Oneida Nation, and our language is pronounced Oneyote Aga, and it means people of the standing stone. I'm Turtle Clan, and my Oneida name is Yoda Hala Kodaze. Um, I'm an enrolled member of the Oneida Nation, and I also go by James Flores. I'm the manager of tribal relations here at the Milwaukee Public Museum, and I'm a woodland dancer. My name, my name is Maynard Webster. I'm an Oneida from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, born and raised here, um, and I'm the grass manager. Megan? Bonjour. Hello, everyone. My name is Megan Tucker. I am originally from Kashina, Wisconsin. I'm Ojibwe Oneida. And this is Matthew Cleveland. He is Ho-Chunk. He is seven years old. Thank you for those introductions. Um, I am, you're so... Ooh, okay, so I just got another question about <laughs> regalia. I'm sorry, we're kind of going back and forth between all these, but um, so another question about regalia, uh, do dancers make your own dresses or does someone else make them for you? And are um, dresses or regalia passed from, you know, parents to children to grandchildren? Uh, some of the, every dancer is different. Uh, some people just um, didn't know their past, didn't know their family. So they just starting their first generation of dancing. And, uh, but most get passed down. Like I said, uh, you can tell by their designs, they're older, they hand those designs down. Some families have colors you can recognize. In my family, we always wore yellow and uh, other, other tribes. And that's the thing is you gotta understand, we're all different tribes, we're all different people, all different nations. And uh, we all have certain designs we have to use, we have the jingle. She's from the area, so she uses floral designs. You wouldn't see geometrical. Those are from the Southwest. So that's what I mean. You can kind of tell a little bit about the dancer, where they're from, who they are, what tribe they are. But yeah, most of them do make their own regalia. Of course, the family helps out. Uh, the males usually got to get the feathers together for them and their uh, designs, the women would usually help, the mom, the grandmother. Thank you so much. And actually with that, it's a nice segue because we have a few questions about feathers as well. So someone is wondering what types of feathers are used and why? These are all eagle feathers. And um, most of the time they are handed down, but um, you might know eagles don't live forever. So when they pass away, people bring them to the DNR and only Native Americans can uh, possess eagle feathers. And the Native Americans can request it from the DNR and they send them some of the feathers, but most are handed down of course, through the family. And sometimes you're earned whether like the when you come back from a war, you're given maybe a bonnet or some feathers because you earned those. 
and you can only be given them from a veteran. So that's kind of how all these dancers here got their feathers is from a veteran and an old, older family member. Excellent. All right. I'm going to switch gears just a little bit um, to talk about the drum and the music because we have some questions about that as well. Um, someone is wondering what the drumsticks are made out of. Well, it's kind of, they, of course, they used to use for the drumsticks, used to use one sticks. Um, we kind of sub, uh, replaced them with um, like fiberglass or something a little stronger because they do, they were breaking and things. And we put our own decoration with them, just like anything, you know, you want it to look nice. But there's padding on the end, leather on both ends where you can hold it. And then you don't want to hit a drum with the end of a stick, it would tear it. So you got to put a soft padding on the end, usually some type of leather. Nowadays, you kind of yarn and then you put the leather over it. So that's just a little bit about the drumsticks. Perfect. And then someone is also wondering um, if there is any differ what kind of differences there may, may be between regional or like tribal drum playing between tribes? Very good question. Down south towards Oklahoma, down into Arizona, they sing what we call a Southern style, which they use their regular voice, a deeper voice. You go to the Dakotas, even up into Canada, they sing Northern, which is high. And we've kind of been using both styles today. And it just varies in between. Like again, every tribe is different. They all have their own songs. Some say words, some don't. Some are like hymns. You sing it, but there's no words with it. And uh, the main thing is just that every tribe is different from South to North. And they all have their own styles. But we are from this area. This is kind of the style they sing. So, but some tribes don't have big drums. And some just use gourds or hand drums or really big drums. So every tribe is different. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm seeing everybody on Zoom and YouTube. We have so many amazing questions. I'm so sorry. We're not going to have time to get to all of them because we do have another group that's going to be coming to perform. But I have one last question. And my question, I know I'm sorry, I'm hitting you with all the questions today. But my last question is, what is one thing that you would like our um, students to take away from your performance today? I like on this, again, this indigenous day. And we're out here to teach everybody something. We're just like you are. We're exactly like you are. But at the same time, we're trying to keep our culture alive. Every tribe is trying to keep their culture alive in the North America. And that's why we're glad to come out. I'm glad you guys had awesome questions. I hope you learned a little something today. And we have a lot more style of dancers, a lot more dances we do, but I'm glad we just got this time to talk to you, to show you, explain to you who we are. And uh, I guess the last thing I gotta say is happy Indigenous Day. Thank you so much. I'm going to thank Kelly and I'm going to thank Little Priest and all of our performers today and dancers. Thank you so much. Um, we are so grateful to have you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit at you while we have a little bit of a uh, set change <laughs> for Little Priest to come off the stage and for um, our, uh, our next group, Mexico Nikina, who is going to be coming on. So, um, so our next group is going to be representing a different um, region and um, different culture from the cultures that were represented just now. 
Um, I also do want to point out, uh, I've gotten a couple comments that um, some of the audio is a little bit tough to hear with the drums. And so we're working on that. We're working on audio settings. Uh, it also may just be that Zoom likes to prioritize human voices over um, drums. And so that may be a little glitch with Zoom, but we are working on it. So uh, we appreciate everybody's patience there. Um, and we are so, so excited to be welcoming Mexico Indígena. And I'm going to give us just a couple minutes to let everybody uh, clear the stage. I am looking for some of these other questions. And um, again, as just a reminder, we are um, both on Zoom and YouTube. We don't have as many questions on YouTube. You are uh, always welcome to log in if you are watching on YouTube to log in and ask those questions while you are there. Um, and again, using that Q&A function on Zoom is really helpful for us to monitor all of those different questions. Um, so while we wait, we are going to, you know what, I'm actually just going to tell you a little bit about, you know, how you can double check uh, to see when our next Learn with an Expert is coming up. Those of you who have participated in Learn with an Expert before know that this is a slightly different uh, format than we normally do. Normally we have one single individual uh, talking a little bit about their work and now we have a whole bunch of people here and we're so, so excited. If you would like to know more about our Learn with an Expert programs, they are always free. And uh, if you'd like to learn more, we uh, you can sign up, you can visit our website, mpm.edu. You can also sign up for our educator uh, e-blast, okay? So I see some of our performers are coming in. Oh, I can move some chairs if you'd like. Okay, we're gonna be moving chairs around. Very nice. I'm checking on some of the other questions here. All right, wonderful. So again, I'm really sorry that we weren't able to ask or answer everybody's questions. We have so many questions. Um, especially on Zoom. We only have so much time, but we, again, are so, so excited and hopefully we'll be able to answer some more questions as well as Mexico and Nikina sets up. <laughs> we'll give it maybe two more minutes. Awesome, I'll do a quick little intro. All right, thank you for bearing with us there. We have everybody all set up. Uh, again, I am so excited to introduce our second group performing today, Mexico Indígena. Um, we're gonna be exploring native Mexico this time through drum and dance um, as they perform dance and drum rhythms native to the Aztecs.
Aho. We are the Mexica Aztec dancers. We're very happy and honored to have this opportunity to represent our culture. This is the Mexica nation, the better known as the Nahua people or the Aztecs. These are dances that have been passed on from many generations, hundreds of years to us. And these are our ancient dances of the Aztecs. All right, wonderful, thank you. Um, so are you, are you okay having, answering some questions here? Because excellent. excellent, because we have some excellent, excellent questions um, in Zoom and YouTube. Just as a reminder, you can ask questions in the Q&A section on Zoom and you can um, log in and, and ask some questions in the comment section on YouTube. So um, the first question actually that I'm getting is about the drums that you are playing. And someone is wondering what they are made from and if you can talk a little bit about those drums. Sure, uh, first of all, the name of our drums are called Wewetl, and that is in the Aztec language. Uh, there are over 130 Native American languages of Mexico, from Mexico, and uh, the Spanish language is actually not one of them. Not everyone in Mexico speaks Spanish. There are hundreds of thousands of people, even today, that do not speak Spanish in our homeland. The name of our drum, as I said, is Huehuetl in the Aztec language now. It is carved out of a piece of wood that came from a trunk of a tree. Very unique, unique drum. The front of it has an image carved out that it represents Tonatiu. Tonatiu is the, uh, the sun in the Aztec world, a life giver, a life maintainer. And uh, the type of uh, wood that was used to create this drum is called mesquite. It is a Mexican uh, wood, very hard wood, and it creates, uh, as, you, as you heard, a very incredible sound. Uh, so this is uh, a drum that took about three and a half months to create. It's all hand carved. It is truly a jewel. The other one, uh, I myself, uh, the other way with I myself um, designed that one when my uh, oldest brother passed on. And uh, it means, well, it has to do with life and death. And so it's a very precious drum as well. We presently own about 20 drums, and they're all what the same caliber of these types. Yes. Excellent, thank you. Um, we are also getting a lot of questions about uh, what we're seeing, what we're what, what you're wearing. Um, specifically, I think we can kind of maybe go go down the line, but um, specifically the amazing headdresses and what they are made out of. I'll start with the head, headdresses. They are, are called Copili Quetzalis, and that is in the Nahuatl language, in the Aztec language, mean uh, uh, headdresses of great beauty. Um, Quetzal was a uh, bird. I, I believe the museum has a Quetzal. Um, not many left in the world. Unfortunately, that is the number one reason we don't wear the type of feathers that our ancestors wore hundreds or even thousands of years ago, because uh, many of these birds are an endangered species and some of them have vanished from Earth. So nowadays we use uh, feathers from um, birds or animals that, uh, that are not even native to uh, the Americas. Um, the great big long uh, feathers are uh, pheasant feathers. S uh, some of them, they do grow uh, at over six feet in length for one feather. Uh, you're probably wondering what we feed these pheasants. Well, yeah, I'll let you know. It's a secret, but uh, jalapenos and tacos. Actually, uh, pheasant feathers are 
from Asia. There are just over 200 species of uh, pheasants and they're from Asia. And so that's the name of our headdress is Copili Quetzalis. The one that I'm wearing has the image of that, what it looks like a jaguar. Now, it is not a jaguar. Uh, it is the head of a cougar, also known as the mountain lion. Now, um, they are not an endangered species. So um, when these die of natural causes, we can buy them. And or even, I don't know if they're allowed to hunt them, but uh, there's a lot of them around in, in, all over the Americas. They are cousin to the jaguar. They're almost identical, except for the black spots. Um, uh, the black spots, I myself created those with a Sharpie black marker. Uh, that was the only thing that, that actually worked on, 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 on the hair. So, so um, the, the the outfits, uh, well, we ourselves take the time and dedication that it takes to create these, uh, some of them almost identical uh, replicas to those outfits used by our ancestors hundreds of years ago. So there you go. Perfect, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep with this theme. Um, someone is wondering um, if there is special meaning or symbolism in the colors and the patterns of what you're wearing. Well, our ancestors uh, dedicated much of their uh, images on the drums and outfits to um, things of nature, uh, animals, and also the movement of our galaxy, our stars. They knew a lot about that. And uh, the same goes with, uh, with the, what we're wearing. I mean, Diana, in the center there is wearing a, a pattern of uh, uh, the jaguar. Uh, actually, you know, <laughs> that material, I, I happened to, to see that material in a fabric store when we went to uh, uh, Florence, Italy, and I bought it there, came back and made this outfit. It's, it's, it's been a good 20 years since we made it. And, uh, well, it represents the jaguar, but some of the other ones have uh, uh, images of such as Tonatu or or Quatlique, uh, the moon, or the sun, and other uh, entities that are very important to the culture. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question along these lines because we have a lot of them. Um, and so some people are wondering how long it took to make some of these, uh, the clothing and the headdresses. It really is different from one outfit or one drum to the next. Um, but usually a couple, two, three months Jasmine uh, owns two of the most difficult uh, outfits that we ever made. She's not wearing one of them today. Um, and one of them is, is retired, meaning it's, it's in a case behind glass. And it's been probably a good eight years that has not been used. It's, uh, the, the quality of it is museum quality. And so she wants to save it for her kids someday. And, uh, but some of them take two, three months. Her outfits took about six months each to make. Uh, so it, it, it varies, the same thing with headdresses, the same thing with the, um, the, the drums. Now, one of the things that I'd like to mention is the fact that uh, when I was uh, eight years old, I was brought to this country and, and it was in the month of December, and it was very, very cold, lots of snow. I hated it, so I kept asking my mom to take us back to Mexico. Family members were back there, and, and, uh, and friends, and we came here as migrant workers. Uh, Mexico and the United States had an agreement back then, and, and we came in legally, and we stayed, became US citizens, 
later on and uh, that we were given the opportunity. But um, she kept telling me that we could not go back. So I decided, well, then I will bring Mexico to me. And I, when I was 13 years old, I decided to start my own dance group to bring those dances of Mexico and the drum rhythms and everything else that comes along with that. Uh, so at 13 years old, after having raised money uh, for a whole year, I don't know how I talked my mom into allowing me at 13 years to take the Greyhound bus all the way from Madison, Wisconsin, all the way to Mexico City to get uh, outfits, boots, hats, sombreros, everything we needed, feathers. And I started my dance group when I was 13 years old. I led that dance group, opened up some dance studios later on, right here in Milwaukee. And um, I ran the dance company for 50 years. That dance company became a very large dance company. We were, we had an agent and we went all over the world. It was so much fun. Right now I'm teaching at a school in Waukesha. It's called La Casa de Esperanza. I teach drum, dance, music, and folk dance as well. And so it, 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 it's a true, true pleasure. In fact, one of my students from La Casa is here today. Her name is Romeli. She's an incredible, incredible dancer and also a drummer. So we thank you for the opportunity to be able to represent our culture today. We thank the uh, Milwaukee Public Museum. We've been dancing on this stage for well over 20 years. Uh, and so it, it, it's a pleasure to come back every time. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. I hope Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate Mexico and Dikina being here. We appreciate your incredible dancing. I don't know how much more time that we have. Do you have time to answer a question about dancing? Of course. Is that okay? All right, wonderful. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of questions. Uh, people who are interested in knowing a little bit more about the dances themselves and what they uh, might mean and um, how each dance differs a little bit. Definitely. Again, uh, we know many dances, dances such as uh, uh, Toshtli, which is in the uh, Nahuatl or Aztec language, it's, it's, it's called rabbit. So there's a dance that, uh, that, that we do to honor the rabbit and the deer and the sun and the moon and a rain dance, even though uh, I always like to clarify the fact that a rain dance is not a two minute dance. It is a serious ritual. And I myself took uh, part in these kind of rituals that still go back uh, uh, and go on back home. These rituals start the morning of, for say, May 13th, 6 a.m. till midnight. You dance almost without stopping. Uh, just to drink water and have a little food every every four or five hours, uh, three days, 6 a.m. till midnight. That's a ritual, not a three-minute dance. And uh, it, it is a, an impressive um, uh, opportunity for dancers to really find out who they really are and where we come from and where we're going. So, so you know... <clears throat> I tell them, when you're out here representing a whole culture, it's important to g give all you have, dance with passion, I tell them often. And, and, and if you do that in everything in life, if you do that in everything in life, and you give it your all, you're going to strike gold. So remember that. And you saw that they dance with so much passion, and that's what it takes. So, uh, so the, the outfits, well, you know, and the dances, they're dedicated, as I said before, to certain different animals that were important to our culture, and, and or the stars, the sun, the moon, 
it was very important to them, those, those uh, things. Wonderful. We have just about one minute left. Um, and I know, again, there were so many questions. Um, hopefully, I kind of hit at least some of the questions about the music and the clothing and the dance. Um, but I would like to close out just by asking you um, if there's anything else that you would like to share about the culture that you're representing or um, one takeaway that you might like our students joining us online to have. As long as I am talking to students out there, you know, as I said earlier, I, when I first came here, I, I disliked uh, where I came, where I was brought. But with the years, I learned not to like these United States of America. I learned to love this country. It is the greatest country in the world. And we seriously need you all of the young people to continue and make this the greatest country in the world. And it is up to you. So prepare yourselves for the future. Don't waste time. School is not a playground. School is to learn and to better yourself so that you and your family and our country can benefit from that. Muchas gracias. All right, thank you again. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Mexico Indígena. We are so, so grateful to have you um, and as well to have Little Priests having performed before them. Uh, happy Indigenous Peoples Day, everybody. Uh, we are, again, so grateful to have everyone and so grateful to have you joining us today. So again, thank you so much. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about our Learn with an Expert program, you can always go sign up for our educator newsletter at npm.edu. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.